EF Core interceptors allow you to hook into the entity framework operations such as executing database commands or running behavior before and after saving changes to the database. In this video I'm going to show you how to use interceptors to implement publishing of domain events and then refactor this into a more reliable implementation and store the domain events as outbox messages. I'm going to start from this application database context that already has some behavior inside. The save changes method is overridden and inside of it we are calling the base implementation to persist any existing changes to the database and then we are publishing the domain events. This logic is implemented in the publish domain events async method and what I want to do is to extract this into an EF core interceptor. So what are EF core interceptors? Let's start by creating a simple class that's going to represent my interceptor. So I'm going to call this the publish domain events interceptor and the base interface an EF core interceptor has to implement is the I interceptor interface. If you take a look at the definition of the I interceptor interface you'll see that it is empty. So this is just a marker interface that all the other interceptors have to implement. What we want to do is to hook into the save changes operation and for this there is the save changes interceptor. So you'll see that it's implementing the I interceptor interface and it has many methods inside such as the saving changes for hooking into the hook before we call save changes then we have save changes for when it's already completed and also there's the asynchronous versions of these methods and you'll see that they all have default implementations here now I don't want to be using this interface but there's actually a save changes interceptor base class that already implements this interface properly and what I can do is just override these methods because they are virtual and hook into the method that I need. The one that I'm looking for is the saved changes async method, which is going to allow me to run some behavior after the call to save changes async completes. If I go back to my database context, what I'm running after I call save changes async on my database context is publishing the domain events. So what I want to do is to take this method here and move it into my interceptor. So I'm going to copy this method and we're going to take care of the missing things that we have. So first of all, I need access to the change tracker. So I'm going to add an argument here that's just going to be my base database context. I'm not going to use a concrete type and I'm going to use this context to access the change tracker and the rest of the code stays the same. So I'm going to grab any entries that implement the entity base class select these entities, extract out my domain events, and then I need to publish them one by one. Now for this, I need my iPublisher from Mediator, and I'm going to inject this as a dependency. So I'll say private read only iPublisher, and inject this from the constructor. And then inside of my saved changes method, what I'm going to do is call my publish domain events async method, and I need to pass it my database context. So I'll say await, publish domain events async and how do I get my database context well I can do that from the save changes completed event data which has a context property you'll see that this property is nullable so I'm going to do a null check here if event data context is not null then you're going to call my method to publish the domain events and for the return of this method I can either await the base implementation or return the result that I get here which is what's going to happen inside of the implementation of save changes async. So this behavior is now part of my interceptor and is going to execute after we call save changes on the database context so I can safely remove it from my database context implementation and I can also get rid of the override to save changes async and my dependency on the iPublisher from Mediator. That means I can also get rid of it from the constructor and this is what I'm left with in my database context just applying my entity configurations from this assembly and defining some database sets on the iApplication DB Connect interface and the actual logic is part of my interceptor so let's go ahead and move this interceptor into its own file and now I need to connect this interceptor with my database context so my preferred way of doing this is using dependency injection so what I'm going to do here is configure the interceptor as a service. So I'm going to add it as a singleton. 
and I'll say add singleton publish domain event interceptor. Now you need to be mindful about the service lifetimes here. I'm configuring the interceptor as a singleton and I have a dependency here, which is iPublisher, and this is configured as a transient service. So this is something that you can safely do. However, you can't inject scope services into your singletons. So be very mindful of this when you are using interceptors. Now, to connect this to my database context, I need to call an override here. It's going to give me access to the service provider, which I'm going to use to resolve my interceptor. So I'll say use SQL Server, and then I'll call add interceptors. And this is how I can plug in any interceptor instances. And I'm going to get it by calling the service provider, get required service, and I'm going to look for the publish domain events interceptor. So this will take care of configuring my interceptor with the application database context. But the one problem that I have with this implementation of publishing the domain events after I call save changes is that this isn't reliable and any of the publishes here could fail and it will cause an exception to be thrown in my original EF core operation. So how do I make this more reliable? Well, a popular pattern that I like to use for this is called the outbox pattern and I'm going to show you how to use it to store the domain events as outbox messages and we're also going to configure this as another interceptor. So I'm going to create a new folder here that I will call an outbox and inside of it, I'm first going to create a simple record that's going to be my outbox message. So this type is going to contain the base information required for an outbox message. And this will be the identifier for this message. Then I'm going to have a name for my domain event. I will also have a string value that will be the content, which is actually going to be the domain event serialized as JSON. Then I'm going to add a date time value when this outbox message was created. And I'll also add another date time value that could be nullable that's going to say when it was processed. So processed on UTC. And I'm going to add a nullable error string for any exception messages that could arise when I'm processing my outbox messages. So with this type in place, I can go ahead and define an EF core configuration. So I'll say outbox message configuration. And the only thing I'm going to add here is just to configure the table name. So I'll say I entity type configuration, specify my outbox message. And then inside of the configure method, I'm going to say builder to table and I'll call it outbox messages. And the rest of the columns here are going to be configured by convention. So the ID property is going to be configured as a primary key and the other columns will be converted into proper values in my database. Now I need to add a new migration to add this table to the database and the configuration that I just added is going to be automatically picked up by the call to apply configurations from assembly. So now I'm going to add a new migration and you can see the migration file that was generated here that's going to create my outbox messages table. The ID property will be configured as the primary key and all of the other properties will be added as columns in this table. This migration will be applied to my database when I start my application and the only thing that's missing is the interceptor that's going to take my domain events and convert them into outbox messages. So I'll call this the insert outbox messages interceptor and I'm also going to implement the base save changes interceptor in this case. So let me add the save changes interceptor base class and I'm going to override a different method this time. I'm looking for saving changes async. And the distinction here is that this will run before the call to save changes in the database completes. So any changes I make here will also be part of my original transaction. So I'll say if event data context is not null, I'm going to run my operation to create my outbox messages and I'm going to place this logic inside of a new method that I'm going to create and let's call it insert outbox messages. It's going to need a database context instance in order to execute. We're going to call this the context and I'm just going to call this from my main method and pass it the context instance. I'm going to be using Newtonsoft JSON to serialize my domain events into JSON and I'm going to apply some specific configuration to include the type names so that it can be deserialized into the concrete types for my domain events. So I'm going to create a new instance 
of the JSON serializer settings from Newtonsoft JSON. Let's call this the serializer settings. And I'm just going to configure one property which will be the type name handling, and I'm going to set it to all. The next thing I need to do is to convert my domain events into outbox messages. So I'm going to create a variable to hold my outbox messages, and I'm going to use my database context to access the change tracker. Then I'm going to look for any entries that implement the entity base class. I'm going to select the entity instances from these entries. Then I'll call select many, and I'm going to use my entity to get back my domain events. So I'll say domain event, and on the entity, I'm going to call the domain events property. You will see that this is a list of iDomain event interfaces, which will be the concrete domain events. Then I'm going to call the entity and clear the domain events and now I can return my domain event list. Now the next thing I need to do, now that I have a flattened collection of domain events, is to convert them into outbox messages. So I'm going to call select again and access my domain event, and I'm going to call the outbox message constructor. So I need to pass it an identifier. This is going to be a new GUID. Then for the name of my outbox message, I'm going to use the domain event type. So I'll say get type and then give me the name of this type. Then I'm going to use Newtonsoft JSON to serialize my domain event into JSON, and I'm going to pass it the serializer settings. And for the created on time, I'm going to pass in UTC now. The other values that I have on my outbox message, such as the processed on date, and the error can be given default null values because they don't really exist at the point when I'm creating my outbox message. And now I can just call to list to materialize my outbox messages. One improvement that can be made is to create a variable to hold the UTC now value. So I'm going to create it before I project my outbox messages. So this will be UTC now and it's going to have the same value as before. And now that I have my outbox messages, all I need to do is access my database context, access the database set for these outbox messages. So I need to say set of outbox message, and then I can just say add range and pass in the list of outbox messages. And this will take care of inserting my outbox messages into the respective database set before the call to save changes executes. This means that my outbox messages become part of the existing EF core transaction and everything will be saved to the database in an atomic operation. And this is the critical part of why I like using the outbox pattern. Now I need to also configure this interceptor with dependency injection. So let's go ahead and pass in the insert outbox messages interceptor and I'm going to replace the publish domain events interceptor with the new one for inserting outbox messages and let's take it for a test ride. So what I'm going to do here is send a post request to my API to execute the use case for one user starting to follow another user in the system. So when I click send, we're going to hit the breakpoint inside of the use case handler, which is the start following command handler. And I'm going to press continue and we're going to land on the call to save changes async which is going to trigger our database context. Now I'm going to hit continue again, and we're going to land inside of the insert outbox messages interceptor. And this is running before we have saved the changes to the database. So we're going to execute the insert outbox messages function and it's going to materialize the list of outbox messages, which is just a single outbox message. In this case, containing the follower created domain event with the required information inside. So then it's going to add this to the database set and it's going to persist everything to the database in an atomic transaction. So I'm going to hit continue and you can see we get a response in Postman. And if I head over to SQL Server and I execute the query to fetch me the outbox messages, you will see that I have one outbox message inside, which is the follower created domain event. And it contains the serialized domain event inside of the content column. Now what I need to do is to add a background job that's going to scan my outbox messages and process them one by one. That's going to be just publishing the domain events in the background using Mediator. If you enjoyed this video about EF core interceptors, take a look at this video next where I show you how to optimize the performance of your EF core queries. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons and until next time, stay awesome.